What's up guys, Joe at Momentum Works. Today we're gonna talk about the internals of journal bearing turbos. All right, so outside of the major components, which are your compressor housing, your bearing housing, your turbine housing, and your compressor wheel, and then your turbine wheel and shaft, uh, the main components inside the turbo that you really worry about as far as wear items are gonna be, one, your journal bearings, two, your thrust bearings, and three, the piston ring seals. Um, everyone likes to call them seals. They think it's like a neoprene seal that wears out that you can just change, but it's really not. They're actually piston ring seals that are more meant to keep the exhaust gases out than from the oil in. But let's take a deeper look into how exactly these components inside the turbo work. Um, and we are really gonna focus on those piston ring seals because everyone thinks that they're often the culprit of why a turbo leaks. But nine times out of 10, when you got a leaky turbo, it's not that a seal is bad. It's that there's some sort of condition on the engine causing oil to be pushed past the seals because of a pressure imbalance, whether it's crankcase pressure, overspooling, an unbalanced turbo. But hey, let's take a deeper dive into that now. So guys, we got a couple pieces here. We've got an S410SX turbo. Uh, we have our cutaway model, which you've seen many times. And we have a standard rebuild kit to help illustrate what's gonna be inside this S410SX turbo. In the sake of time, I've already taken apart this turbo and just quickly reassembled it so you can see how all these parts go together. So first things first, you have your compressor cover, which will take off. The next piece here is the bearing housing. And you can see that I've already removed the compressor wheel and the turbine wheel from the uh, bearing housing. Uh, these nuts are reverse thread. So we'll pull that off. And like I said, normally the compressor wheel would be sitting right in there. Um, and then the turbine wheel goes through the back side. So we have that off. So we'll remove our bearing housing. And then that just leaves us with the turbine housing. And here's the bearing housing. This is where all of your bearings are going to live. Uh, that's why it's called a bearing housing, I guess. Um, and we'll jump more into the components that are inside the bearing housing next. What we have here is a standard rebuild kit. This has all of your normal wear items that should always be replaced um, when you're doing a turbo rebuild. Uh, you can see that we have our journal bearing, and this one specifically is a 360 degree thrust bearing because you can see it goes all the way around. Whereas a 270 degree thrust bearing, there would be no material here. We have our journal bearings, and you can see the journal bearings have small holes in them where the oil passes through. Uh, we have new nuts, and these aren't going to come out very well, guys. It's we have um, new nuts. So this is the shaft nut that goes on the turbine housing. These are the nuts that go on the V-band clamps. And let's get rid of this journal bearing. We already talked about those. These are all of your seal rings. And people love to say, oh, the seals on my turbo went out. Well, guys, this is what the seals look like. They're actually piston rings. Okay, and we're going to look at the model to see exactly how they are. And here's a, a circ clip that would hold a journal bearing in. So we got our rings for the turbine side and the compressor side, uh, and then our circ clips that hold the journal bearing in the housing. Also forgot to mention, uh, this is the thrust washer um, that the thrust bearing would sit on, on the oil slingers, things like that. So if you've seen other videos on my channel, you've probably seen this cutaway model before. Let's take a look in here. Uh, first thing, journal bearing. Let's identify the journal bearings in this turbo. You can see they sit there, and the other one sits there. Um, then you can see the thrust bearing here, which our thrust bearing. Uh, this one is not a 360-degree thrust bearing. It appears to be a 270-degree thrust bearing. Um, if you take a close look, I don't know if we can pick them up on the camera, you can see the seal rings uh, right through there um, that go on the turbo, and we took a look at those seal rings from our kit already and then like i said the circlips hold the bearings in place so that they're not sliding back and forth on the shaft so this one's a little crusty this is a used turbine wheel um, but you can see here this has the rings installed on it uh, and this appears to be a double o-ring uh, turbine shaft which means it has two piston rings that sit on opposed to one uh, they're just different designs not necessarily one better than the other 
So let's take a deeper dive into the seal rings that are on the turbine side or the turbine side and the compressor side of the turbo and how exactly they work. So this turbo is actually upside down. Uh, so the drain is up here and the feed is on the bottom the way it's mounted. But basically the oil comes into the turbo under pressure. It goes through the journal bearings and then, you know, it just gravity feeds out the drain. So these seals um, are meant to keep the oil in and keep the exhaust gas out. Now, if anything that's a piston ring design, it's going to have, you know, a piston ring goes into like a C shape. And even if it's touching there, there's going to be a gap. And there's always the possibility that oil could get by. Now, in the design of the turbo, you have manifold pressure on this side spinning the wheel. And then since the wheel is spinning, you're making boost pressure on this side. So we often talk about balance when we talk about turbos. And what that basically means is that you have pressure on this side and you have pressure on this side. And there's three housings, guys, here. There's the exhaust housing, there's the bearing housing, and then there's the compressor housing. So there should never any really be any pressure in the bearing housing, of course, unless you have crankcase pressure that's blowing up the drain tube, and then you know you have a motor problem. But you have pressure on the exhaust side and pressure on the compressor side. So what that means is these two pressures pushing, there should never be any time where oil is coming into the, either of these sides because there's pressure pushing in. So if you have a situation where you're getting oil in the compressor side or oil in the turbine side, chances are there's some sort of pressure imbalance that's allowing oil to get past those oil seals. And remember, those seals are piston rings. They're not a neoprene seal. So there is always the possibility that oil can fit through those cracks. All right, guys. So we talked about the components that you should have replaced when you're getting a turbo rebuild, um, how those components work with the turbo, uh, how the seal rings actually work as far as keeping the oil inside the turbo. So I hope that that was helpful. Uh, if there's any other questions about going a little bit more in depth, we can definitely do that. Today's Memorial Day weekend. I was actually saying two cheese Friday. If you're from the area, they got great pizza. Spilled some on my shirt, so I'm going to cut this video really short. But guys, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. All right. Thanks for watching. Have a happy Memorial Day.